public hates Candy wrappers, screaming baby sticky seeds With 50 as a popcorn kernels in his teeth There's still not one that he won't see Cause Doug loves movies Hey everybody <laughs> this is exactly not the kind of microphone stand I want for this, but I stood in the wings right over there and I looked right at it and I was like, I didn't even register that it's not the kind of like, and we even discussed backstage, oh, this year we got you the mic stand you want. And this is absolutely not, it's not the kind of mic stand I want. I just want to, re anyway. Hey, everybody. <laughs> My name is Doug, and I love movies. This is a crowd where many of the people have not listened to the podcast, and they don't, they're not going to pick up on those cues, and they might look around and go, what's happening? And I'm looking around and going, why are there two empty seats in the very front of the theater? Are there two people with uh, name tags that are hoping to get picked today that want to just move right up to the front? Yeah, I feel like this is rock and roll when they tell the crowd, just rush the stage. <laughs> Do you two guys know each other? No, no interesting. <laughs> just two, two separate dudes took advantage of the, uh, of the open seats, and I couldn't be happier about it. Uh, <laughs> let me get my script out of the bag. Got a lot to talk about tonight, you guys. Um, we're coming to you once again, I want to say for the fifth time, maybe sixth, fifth from this film festival, but I think I also did one at the comedy festival one time. But anyway, we're in Traverse City, Michigan! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go all the colors, I say. <laughs> it's too many colors, too many colors to tr keep track of. Uh, and I would like to see at this point in the show uh, your beautiful handcrafted name tags. Look at that, everybody. Are there any in the balcony? Apologize to you in advance for having those seats. But lots of amazing ones. The Empire Strikes Bach? Your name is Bach? Yep. Your last name? Yeah. I would hope so. <laughs> that would be a weird one. And what's this Marx Brothers thing? Are you, is your name Marx? Animal Zackers. Animal Zackers. <laughs> Instead of Animal Crackers, because his name is Zack. You, me, and Doug B, and you got your face in there. That's pretty cool. Stand up in the aisle and show the entire audience that, what it looks like. No, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I like this guy over here changed Chinatown to Peter Town. You really could have just thrown the word Peter on anything. <laughs> the Peter strikes back. <laughs> what does that say? Inglor, inglor, inglora, eus bastards. All right, well, it's curious how many inglorious bastard signs there are here tonight. I don't know why you guys did that, but thank you very much for bringing all your name tags and good luck being chosen this evening. The, the people I'm inviting onto the stage when we get to the game portion of the show will be selecting uh, the name tag that they want to play for, and they're going to win some fabulous prizes, including what I have here in my, uh, the bag they gave me when I got here, the Traverse City Film Festival bag. Um, First, I got to do some Doug plugs. Tomorrow night, be sure to check out the comedy panel here at the Traverse City Film Festival. I'll be moderating that with lots of funny people. And that's free to get into, I'm pretty sure. And then the Benson movie interruption of Starship Troopers is at midnight at the beautiful State Theater, and tickets are only $700 a piece. <laughs> so be sure to come out to that. Uh, the star of the movie, Casper Van Dien, was, uh, I asked him a couple weeks ago uh, to come to this and participate, and he was super into it and excited about it and willing to do it, and then he got a guest role on Hawaii Five-O. 
so he's not going to make it out, but we're still going to have fun making fun of his uh, classic movie. Uh, this Monday, July 31st, Douglas Movies is back at the Gramercy Theater in New York City, and we're back in Los Angeles at Melt Meltdown Comics on Sunday, August 6th at 4.20. We've got shows coming up in Cincinnati, Columbus, Chicago, San Francisco, and more. For all the dates and deets and links, go to douglovesmovies.com. That one was better. It's like, it's like some of you listened to an episode of the show between when I said none of you listened to it. <laughs> some people got up to speed and they're ready to go. Um, our good friend Jesse Pasternak is not going to be here this evening because he's dead. No, he is. That's messed up. He is alive. And well, and I wanted to give you guys an update on him and why he's not here. Uh, he's out and he's actually out in Los Angeles. And I asked him to write a little message uh, to the audience tonight and the listeners at home because he's been on uh, the last few Traverse City episodes. He says, I'm currently doing rehearsals for my Broadway show, which is called How to Succeed in Last Man Stanton with Only Sort of Trying. And it's opening across the street from Michael Moore's show. <laughs> so there's a little Broadway humor for you guys, because he and I both enjoy Broadway. And then he goes, uh, uh, in all seriousness, <laughs> if I could be serious for a moment, uh, he says that he's working for a management company in L.A. He's interning, and he's reading a lot of scripts and uh, that he misses you guys. He's having fun out there, but he also wishes he were here seeing all of his friends in Traverse City. And then he find, at the end he said, eat lots of pie for me. <laughs> so that's Jesse Pasternak. He'll, hopefully he'll uh, stop with this interning nonsense and come back next year and be on this show. This, being on this show is better than being an intern, <laughs> in my opinion. Um... Let's look at the prize bag. It's the lovely bag, as I mentioned. Uh, uh, Traverse City's very into recycling and stuff, and these uh, cloth bags are very nice for uh, bringing small items home from the store and not using plastic. Um, but I brought to give away tonight uh, a copy of Traverse City Magazine. Because I just fight, if I take it with me and I read it when I get home, I'll just get sad. I'll miss the place so much that I'll, I'll just be like, oh, I should have left it there. Uh, these are, these are a, uh, a story that's been told a few times at this festival. Uh, these are some uh, things they give you when you're a, a talent here at the festival. Uh, cherry chews uh, from the dog bakery. And they're, they're doggy treats, but they have icing on them which I don't think a dog is gonna like spit it out if it doesn't have, you know, icing on it. But that's just my excuse for uh, the first time I was here, maybe even the second time, I ate all of them. <laughs> and honestly, I didn't think they were great, but I, they, were, they were all right. <laughs> they were worth eating all of them, and <laughs> Jeff Tate did the same thing, so I'm just, I'm just giving them away this time so I don't risk uh, coming back to my room and eating them. Uh, a copy of one of my CDs, Promotional Tool. Uh, there's a movie playing this week uh, here at this festival called Mr. Roosevelt that I'm lucky enough to be a small part of. And it's uh, the writer and director and star of that movie, Noelle Wells. She made a little uh, comic book uh, about the movie to like promote it that she was giving out to people. And I got a hold of a few, so I'm... Uh, giving one to you guys tonight. A uh, blue card from my show, Getting Dug With High. A, uh, oh, this is neat. One free week of, uh, just one free week of whatever they do at Yen Yoga and Fitness. <laughs> so, you know, if you, if you live around here and you win that, good for you. <laughs> I'm not, I've got other things to do besides yoga and fitness while I'm here because uh, it turns out this city is showing a lot of movies and they have uh, alcohol. Uh, also, uh, here's a slice of pie. They used, they used to put the pie in the bag, but I guess now they just want people to come over and get one. And uh, what's the place that gives them away? The Pie Company. Traverse City Pie Company, is that what it's called? All right. 
Uh, here's a, a Peacemaker pipe that's only been used once. And, oh, this is another cool thing they give you is like a Swiss Army knife that's got the name of some uh, company on it. And some local <laughs> merchant. Oh, and another uh, coupon. This is for 20% off your next purchase at Eat Sparks Barbecue. Or Sparks Barbecue. But their website is eatspartsbarbecue.com. All right. So I brought all that stuff. All my guests brought something. And they're going to contribute it to the bag when I bring them out here right now. Uh, three regular guests on Doug Loves Movies that a lot of you have figured out exactly who's going to be here. But let's still give them a big warm welcome. It's Sean Jordan, Leonard Malton, and Sam the Ma'am <laughs> Levine, a.k.a. Lil Wolverine. Oh. What a oh God! Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you listening at home, I wish the audience at home could have shared that experience. That was that exceptional. Was, you, that was Doug being so considerate. As I was trying to help out Leonard and move a table over so he could put his drink on the table instead of having to go all the way to the floor like these other animals will have to do. And uh, yeah, and I almost I did make a big mess. So. Uh, I mean, anyway. you know, it's it, compared to what it could have been. Yeah. Right, I caught it, sort yeah. of. It was, yeah, it looked great. Good save. Yeah, thank you very much. Let's meet my guests individually, starting with the man with water on a table. It's Leonard Moulton, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> now, now that... That isn't metaphor, isn't it? Uh, water on the table, or is that just literally? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I think you have water on the table. <laughs> as do I, and I'm going to enjoy mine as well. And uh, how are you doing? This is your... How many times have you been to Traverse City? This is City? my very first visit to Traverse City. No way. <laughs> and to the film festival. I see you at festivals, so it feels like I've seen you at this one. I know, but... But this uh, is your first time. There's other ones, and uh, this is my first time here with my family, my wife, Alice, my daughter, Jessie. My we're wife! <laughs> <laughs> we're having a great time meeting a lot of great people, and the weather's been gorgeous, especially today. And uh, uh, it's got all the right ingredients for a good film festival. Yeah, I think you're going to have a very nice time here. And uh, you've got some of your own uh, events coming up this week? Yeah, several. I'm going to be, uh, well, we're going to be doing, Jesse and I are going to be doing our podcast, Malton on Movies, Sunday morning, bright and early. Uh, what, that's at like 9.30 a.m.? I'm afraid it is, yes. Yeah, at yeah. so I'll see you later that day, probably. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and... Then I'm interviewing the Alloy Orchestra that afternoon. Oh, oh that's neat. Three great guys from Boston who play um, incredible music for silent films. In this case, Harold Lloyd's uh, comedy Speedy. Yeah, I, I'm, I, am, I got my ticket for that one. I'm yep. very excited to see that. Very much looking forward to that. And uh, I think that that's, uh, they, they've given me kind of a light schedule, which is fine with me. Cause that's good. You can see uh, some films. Is there, uh, and... is there a film that you're uh, particularly looking forward to seeing here? Well, I want to see the documentary about Gilbert Gottfried, which yes. uh, these guys are, just yes. saw. I just saw it and then ran over here for this, and uh, the, the film was a treat, and uh, Gilbert Gottfried was a treat because he was there in person with his wife, and they, uh, they talked uh, after the film, and it was a terrific experience. I think it plays again tomorrow. Yeah, it has uh, several other shows. And, and that's uh, directed by Neil Berkeley, who's done a lot of other good work, too, mm -hmm. including a wonderful documentary called Beauty is Embarrassing about the artist Wayne White. And if you don't know Wayne White, and you do remember Pee Wee's Playhouse, then you've seen Wayne White's work. Uh, that's just his most visible work, I guess, his most uh, celebrated work. Yeah. But he is, he is uh, something of a genius, I think. Yeah, he's, uh, and, uh, you know, the movie's a lot about his uh, painting and his, uh, yep. his artwork, but he also, he did design the Pee Wee Herman set. <laughs> so that's anyway, sort that's, of his that's claim to fame. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's a cool movie. And same director, Neil Berkeley, did this documentary about Gilbert Gottfried, and they re- he really followed Gilbert around for a while. And and uh, you know, he's not like, his offstage persona is uh, different from his onstage one. So it's a it's a fascinating documentary. Yep. yep. And then there are a couple of other films that uh, have been. Well, one of them opens theatrically tomorrow, I guess, uh, which is Detroit, mm-hmm. closing night film here. But I hadn't seen it yet, so I may have the opportunity to see it here. At, Seeing uh, it here in the seen. beautiful State Theater. Yeah, uh, it, it's one of the best theaters in the, uh, I say, in the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's you know, and and uh, and then some probably some uh, surprises. I find I get more adventurous at film festivals than I am at home. All right. If I'm at a film festival and I'm out of town and I'm not you know, at home doing my everyday things, and there's a Bulgarian movie uh, that somebody says, this is really great, you gotta see it. Yeah. I'll go. Whereas at home I'll say, do I really want to drive a half hour in the rain? You see this Bulgarian movie, you know. When is such a problem in Los Angeles, driving in the rain? That's never happened to anybody. (laughs) It's not a thing. (laughs) It has to be raining, there has to be a popular Bulgarian film. That's... (laughs) It could happen. It could happen, Sean. It could. I agree. Well, that's one of the cool things about this festival is that they're uh, showing films. They have like a sidebar of, uh, uh, I think, seven different movies that are all from countries that are on uh, Trump's Muslim ban. And uh, I'm not joking. Yeah, and, that's, uh, that's and real. It's, Sounds it, like it should be hilarious, but... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, it's really cool. But the filmmakers that are involved in those films, of course, can't, can't yeah. be here to uh, show them. So it's, it's, a, it's a bittersweet situation. What do you have for the uh, prize bag, Mr. Well, Balton? Well, I have... Uh, which it will come to no shock to anybody who listens to your show. A copy, and you get another copy, mm-hmm. of my classic movie guide. Like I love it. Classic movie guide. Hell yeah. 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 Hell yeah. More than 10,000 movies yes. are in this book. Prior to 1965. Yeah. And from the silent movie era up to the 60s. Yeah. And then Suck I on have... this, millennials. <laughs> 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 and then I have these buttons that my daughter uh, has made up of me in my uh, celebrated appearance on South Park some years ago. Yeah, you got to run with that image. Both, both uh, me as myself and me as the, uh, the robotic Leonard. Okay. So, <laughs> the evil robot Leonard. Well, we're we're uh, I'm fighting the Mecha Streisand in that episode. Oh, okay. And and it's more than twenty years old, but it's still in their rotation. They still show it. <laughs> I can't so, imagine an evil anything Leonard Moulton. It, well, they all seem like sweethearts. That's that's very benign and very sweet of you. Thank you, Sean. Benign and sweet feel it's like very sweet, but things. it's mostly benign. <laughs> <laughs> benign hurt my feelings, but sweet was cool, so I'm excited about it. <laughs> All right, let's say hello to our next panelist, the uh, fellow on the opposite end from me. It's Sam Levine, everybody. Hello, Traverse City. Lil Logan is here. That's me. Under a cloud of controversy, the clouds have parted here at Traverse City. They really ha- I did not feel good about that win in San Diego. He did not he have a comfortable win on the <laughs> last show, so nope. he f- flew all the way here to have a better win. Well. Or at least a fairer uh, one. Yeah, it well. was a, you know, it was a tricky decision on my part, and I don't know if I'd made the right one, but uh, you're our standing champion at this <laughs> point. true. And, that's all uh, that really matters. That's all that really matters. <laughs> and we'll, we'll see how you do tonight. We'll see. I, it's always an honor to lose to uh, Mr. Leonard Malton himself. Well, that doesn't happen, though. <laughs> yeah, but it could. There's also somebody sitting in between you and Leonard. <laughs> eh. it, would, it wouldn't be an honor to lose to me all of a sudden. Eh. What a dickhead. <laughs> What do you got for the bag, Sam? Oh, well, as some of you may or may not recall, it's, it's high times for TV screeners at my place. So uh, I got actually some good ones. Uh, a show called Happen Leonard, which, okay, judging by the applause, none of you have seen it. <laughs> and uh, whoever wins this, I actually recommend you watch it. You're going to be pleasantly surprised. It's the entire first season of Happen Leonard. Also, uh, based on the Stephen King novel and from producer J.J. Abrams, it's 112263, the Hulu miniseries starring some guy named James Franco. I hope that guy turns out okay. Are you making these things up? No, these are, these are, these are real things. These I'm are real things that Pulling out of make? my bag here. Also from Hulu, <laughs> it's the Jason Reitman 
uh, uh, production of Casual, starring Michaela Watkins and two other actors I'm not familiar with, but I'm told it's wonderful. And last but not least, something your parents will enjoy the next time you visit them, and they're like, you never bring us any gifts. You can say, Mom, don't be ridiculous. I brought you all of last season of The Crown. Oh, except oh. Really <laughs> all but all but one disc of the last all season. All but one disc. You don't of get the to crown. know how it ends because it's scratch. Don't worry, Mom. I'm sure we can look it up online. <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> I blame the people at Netflix for this shoddy instruction. I think you were just dug in like a tick to the crown last night and you didn't so. put him back in the right way. All right, so some of the crown. <laughs> all right, That's Sam, why don't you gather all this stuff off the ground <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and bring me all of your offerings. Will do. Uh, uh, terrific job, as usual, bringing, Thank all, you. bringing all of that stuff. <laughs> also with a plastic bag joining us tonight, <laughs> his, his first time in Traverse City, it's Sean Jordan! <laughs> Hell yeah. I love it here. Yeah, you're having a good time, aren't you? I'm having a really good time. You got a haircut today. What up? (laughs) (laughs) Boy, I got a haircut. I looked like a fucking monster before this, and now I look, you know, like less of a monster. And you got uh, some wedding clothes today? No, we didn't. (laughs) We didn't go shopping. I wanted to chill. I wanted to chill before this, so... You ran out of time? We didn't run out of time necessarily, but I'm We can talk up, about this later. I'm going to hit up Kelly Jordan. She'll get me a, a wedding shirt. I have to go to a wedding on Saturday. Hilarious, right? Isn't that funny? <laughs> Nobody it's kind of fun. fun that you had to go shopping in Traverse City because you have nothing you could have worn to a wedding. I've been on kind the road for a couple weeks, and it's like uh, T-shirts and a sweater, you know? Thank you, Sam. That ain't going to do it. Excuse me? <laughs> I, think I, don't think, I don't think they were saying anything that involves us. Oh. <laughs> it's just people chatting in the crowd. So, that was a loud chat. Yeah. But uh, I'm glad you're having a good uh, experience here so far. Oh, and, yeah, it's uh, crazy. What it, uh, is that one of the things you did instead of shopping for yourself is shopping for the gift bag? <laughs> That's exactly what, what I did. What do you got I for went, the prize bag? I took the time. I, have, uh, I shopped in my uh, swag bag, and I brought this uh, sparkling, sparkling wine, I believe. Sort of a Traverse City commemorative situation. And then... You could, uh, you could christen a small boat with that. You could. Yeah. Maybe you'd christen a jet ski with this, I think. <laughs> and uh, I brought some dog treats, like my friend. I, oh, uh, boy, doubling up on dog treats. And if you guys just know someone with a dog, you could, you could go ahead You're and... You're really going to go nuts with that. And then uh, I brought some Sour Patch Kids, because they're the best thing to, to eat while you're watching a movie. Who said, yeah, goddamn right, Playboy. You said it. <laughs> And then a uh, $15 iTunes gift card. Whoa. So oh, you need to purchase. Oh. Now we're talking. Yeah. Doesn't take a lot to impress Traverse City. That's, <laughs> I could have bought two of these. What's up? It really is funny that a $15 Everyone's iTunes like, gift card got the biggest reaction of anything. <laughs> Somebody I mean, else it's up the here entire the season of The Crown, you guys. I, thank you, Doug. <laughs> it's most of the first season of The Crown. And also a book written by somebody on the panel. That's, uh, that's astonishing. Can't go down to CVS and buy a, a book that I, I wrote. You know what I mean? Not yet. <laughs> I appreciate the confidence. Now I don't feel benign anymore. I there like it that. is. <laughs> so all of that is going to be somebody's burden <laughs> because it is very heavy and has glass and alcohol in it. But somebody's going to win all of that tonight. You know what I wish I could have brought, but it was too uh, <laughs> squishy. Heroin. To survive. No. No, heroin. And that's Is heroin squishy? squishy? I don't think so. I have no personal experience. But there's a, a, a bakery and coffee house here in town called Morsels. Okay. That has done a series of special uh, cakes and, uh, and goodies named after guests at this year's festival. <gasps> and they have created something called the Leonard Malted. Malted. Which is, yes, little, little uh, like chocolate uh, uh, cake balls with, uh, with milk chocolate frosting and malted, crushed malt, uh, like um, whoppers, yeah, something yeah. like that. <laughs> Side. Leonard, I love your chocolate cake balls. <laughs> you had to go there. You had to go there. I mean, no, I'm going us. to go there. <laughs> you took us there. You were taking us on a walk. We were going to yeah. jump off the dock, you know what I mean? <laughs> um... 
are there, did you see any other examples of food named after people? Uh, uh, yes, I can't remember any of them. <laughs> but uh, if you drop by Morsels, Morsels. Uh, or go online to look them up, you will find them. Very oh, easy. they have it on their website? If they don't yes. have a Doe Benson. <laughs> no? I'd be all right. Groaning for that was hilarious. Thank <laughs> you. There's zero reason to groan at that. It was Thanks. perfect. Yeah, it was yeah, perfect. I appreciate it, Sean. We like each other now, but uh, <laughs> wait till we start playing. <laughs> so, Fuck, Doug, you, you, you apparently didn't get the beard memo tonight. No, I was like, I'm going to let my guests shine in the beard department, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be beardless. Okay. But with facial hair, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, uh, not good at shaving. Which is funny that uh, one of our sponsors of the show tonight is Harry's Shave Club. For only... <laughs> just launch into an I just ad. look right over Harry. What the fuck? <laughs> Harry's um, Shave Club. But I have a few questions before we get to the uh, game portion of the show, as I always do. And uh, Sam, uh, having been on the most recent shows, probably the one that's uh, most prepped for these questions, mm -hmm. maybe thought about them a little bit. I've got some answers ready to go. Nine which, inches. Which question would you, would you like me to start with? Uh, why don't you ask me uh, to recommend a movie that I think you will love that you have not seen? Okay, this is a great one. Uh, I asked my guests, what's the best movie Doug Benson has never seen? You don't know what I've seen. I don't know what you've seen, but I'm going to take a shot. You've not seen this film because it is from the 70s, and it's a film called California Split. Um, Sam, you and I have played poker together. Yep. We've, we're both big James Caan fans. Mm. <laughs> I call well, him, anyway, I call him I was Jimmy. Just, I was just trying to ramp up to, I've seen it. Ah. <laughs> James Caan, I don't believe, is in that. Oh, he's not in that one? No, that's uh, Elliot Gould. Oh, Elliot Gould, Elliot Gould. Uh, George Siegel. But James Caan is in The Gambler. Yes. Yes, which is another... Both of those movies are like about a person with a real fucked up gambling problem. Yes. Yeah. That is, that is exactly what they're about. That's, that's why I confuse them. I understand. But, yeah, now I, I, now I, <laughs> but now I have to California split. Yes, you do. And then I drop the mic and walk out. <laughs> I've never heard gotta, of either one of those movies. I, I got to do the rest of this show. Say, I mean, Sean, pardon me, Sean. That's Okay. I wasn't going to get mad about it. Sam, Sean. Uh, a movie that... Boy, I don't know. You guys are really letting me stew in it. <laughs> Everybody Wants Some? Did you watch that? It just recently came yeah, out. Yeah, I saw that. Joint? Okay. Richard well, then, Linklater. Yeah. Then that's what, you know, that would have been... That was your, that was your attempt. Uh, Do you remember before coming to the show that this question was going to come up? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've no, we've never talked about it before? Hmm. <laughs> Oh, okay. Must be something I've been asking so recently that you haven't been on and asked that question. Yeah, I mean, I was on uh, in, <laughs> like three weeks ago or something. Yeah, so I asked you the question. No, you didn't. I swear <laughs> to God. You, have you ever seen the program, the movie The Program? Yeah. Speaking of James Conn. Jimmy. I call him, call the him program, Jimmy. The program, I like that movie, but it made me, made me want to go lie in the middle of a road until I was dead. I just watched that deleted scene. I just watched it on YouTube the other day because the program is on like Hulu or something. So I watched it. It's a football movie. It doesn't hold up, but it got me fucking pumped when I was in middle school to go play football. So I watched it again. Didn't get me pumped to go Wait, do it. Wait, that was your Hail Mary, Doug. This is a movie you're going to love, a movie that you went on to say isn't good at all. I said it doesn't hold up. I didn't yeah, say it wasn't good. It doesn't it, hold I like up. I it still. Well, if it doesn't hold up, then that, that makes it no longer good. That's potato, what that potato. expression means. Potato, potato. <laughs> He laughs. Now, I know Leonard's <laughs> going to have a good one because he can go uh, deeper than these guys. Well, <laughs> now, is this supposed to be... With those chocolate balls. There, it's damn right. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad now. Now, is this supposed to be a good movie, Doug? That's what I'm saying. The best movie that I've best... never seen. Like, I'm going to just okay. be delighted and be like, why did I never see this? This is so good. Okay. Uh... Employee's entrance. <laughs> That's where you go deep. So you have to go to the back of the video store to get this one? Yes. <laughs> yes. You have to tunnel under the video store. What is employee's entrance? It's a pre-code. You know about those pre-1934 movies uh, but from Warner Brothers. Very racy, uh, very raw, funny, fast, 
stars Warren William, who's in a lot of those movies, uh, who's a suave leading man, kind of the poor man's John Barrymore, and a beautiful Loretta Young, and, uh, and it's about a lascivious boss uh, at a department store, and it's really good. And I showed it a uh, year before last at the Virginia Film Festival. The Library of Congress loaned us their 35 millimeter print, and it played like gangbusters. The audience really ate it up. And how else could we see it? It's on DVD. <laughs> it's, it's on. It's, it's, I want people to be able to see this instead of just you bringing up some movie nobody might, can no, access. No, no. That it, sounds it tricky. Might, it's, it's part of the. Call the Library of Congress. It's, <laughs> book a tour. It it's, it's shows up on TCM. So it might be on their app. You know, they have Turner Classic uh, Movies. Turner Classic Movies. Okay. And if it's not on their app, uh, then it is available as part of the uh, DVD series called Forbidden Hollywood. All right. Forbidden and employees Hollywood. Hollywood. entrance. Terrific. Yep. It's not the catchiest title, but well, sounds like a fascinating ju film. Judge it after you see the film. Okay. That's another good question I should bring up to people. What's the movie that has a title that you hate but you like the movie? <laughs> Mine has to be Larry Crown. Yeah. No, I don't like Larry Crown. <laughs> but I also don't like that title. Uh, all right, so my follow-up question, and this is, since we're at a film festival, I would like it to be something that you've seen at the festival, if you have already seen anything. Uh, starting with Sam, uh, what was the last movie you saw? Well, Doug, you were there. Uh, we literally just watched Gilbert right before doing this show. <laughs> And you liked it? I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, not to uh, brag or nothing, guys, but I know uh, Gilbert and his wife, uh, Dara, and they are wonderful people, and this is an incredibly sweet, uh, touching documentary about the two of them and their relationship and Gilbert and his career, and if you're even familiar with who Gilbert is, you should check this movie out when you can. Okay. Yeah, even if you're not. I think it'd be a fun uh, exposure to him in general. Yeah. If you just watch it, if you weren't familiar with him. Sure. But people mm -hmm. are familiar with him because yeah. everybody's heard that goddamn Affleck duck. Damn right. And also, it is or, screamingly he, funny. He tells, there's a lot of jokes. In it's this, a uh, lot of filthy humor, too. Very It dirty. is the sweetest filthy movie I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> it really uh, is an interesting experience. Sean? I saw Paris Can Wait the other day. And I thought it was fantastic. I'm a big romantic comedy guy, so I was super into it. Nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> I open my soul. I open my soul. I say I'm a big romantic comedy fan. It's all about drinking wine. Tell, tell us about the movie. Who's yeah, the, that's, I was just staring at you because I was like, you know, wanting to hear more. Oh, Diane Lane, Alec Baldwin, and a, a fetching French gentleman. I forget his name, but he was fantastic. It's not the guy from The Artist, is it? No. Okay. <laughs> it's not Jean 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 They uh yeah it's they Alec Baldwin's a producer and his wife goes from uh, I think Barcelona to Paris on a road trip with this French dude that Alec Baldwin works with because he has to go to Budapest I think for some sort of filming situate that was crazy uh yeah anyway they just take a long romantic road trip up the coast and she's debating if she's gonna fuck this dude the whole time or not <laughs> You have All right, you've see. said enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go see if she fucks him, I guess. It's a charming yeah. film. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to. You've seen it, Leonard? Oh, it's a charming film. And it was made by... That's how I was supposed to say it. <laughs> right. Damn it. And, and it was made by Eleanor Coppola, mm -hmm. Francis Ford Coppola's wife. True story. She's 80 years old. Whoa. This is her first <laughs> film. She's Damn. The, she made a great documentary about the making of Apocalypse Now some years ago. Yeah. But she hasn't made a film since, and she's never made a dramatic film before. Mm -hmm. So she's the Grandma Moses of the Will They or Won't They Fuck movies? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, you said that. I did and say that, and I hope... And I hope that they print that quote on the back of the DVD. Yeah, I really uh, do. That's what they sometimes call a money quote, but I don't know that this one is really You know what's going to be weird is I'm going to tell people that you said that. <laughs> <laughs> it pays your money, it takes your chances. What say? <laughs> All right, Leonard, are you ready to answer that question? Well, not easily, because uh, we just came from, my family and I just came from a two-week adventure at... Uh, film festival in the Czech Republic. Whoa. Uh, the Karlovy Vary Film Festival, which okay. has been going since 1946. 
and it's a very old and established film festival. And we saw a lot of interesting movies there that probably will never play here, from Russia, from, uh, from, well, from France, from uh, uh, Israel, uh, from a variety of countries, and uh, all, all really worthwhile. But I don't know how many of them will get a shot here at U.S. distribution. Did you see some stuff that would be uh, come over here? Was it all just... Uh... There's one, well, what's funny is there's one film that's an Israeli-German co-production. And uh, <laughs> believe it or not... <laughs> yeah. Not expected. And, that, sounds, and, that sounds tense. And, and what, what's, the filmmakers were there. It was its premiere showing. The filmmakers were there. The leading cast members were there. And the audience just adored it and gave it a lengthy standing ovation. The kind you read about it from the Cannes Film Festival where they applaud for like five minutes straight. And Alice and I hated it. <laughs> and, uh, Were you guys just putting your hand between people's hands like with a glove on <laughs> so they couldn't applaud? It didn't work. It didn't work. And, uh, but if it's a crowd pleaser, perhaps that's the, it'll get, you know, some, uh, make some waves and make its way over here. Do you know what it's called? Uh, I used to. Before you hated it. <laughs> That's reasonable. The Cake Maker. Thank you, honey. It's, it's called The Cake Maker. <laughs> oh, that guy that has to go in the employee's entrance? <laughs> <laughs> hey, The Cake Maker's here. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, so uh, not a lot to recommend to people. At least not, not currently. Not I mean, Gilbert point. will probably show up somewhere yeah. uh, sometime soon. Oh, I hope so, yeah. And uh, Eleanor Par Coppola's movie, Paris, Paris Can Wait, Wait. Is, is in release already. Oh, okay. Yep. Feels Highly like recommend. a Woody Allen movie to me. The, yeah. ti the title lot, and the cast and everything. That's exactly, it's a lot like a Woody Allen movie, which I'm yep. stoked about. It was great. Yep. All right. It's all about enough. drinking and eating. I love both those things. I saw on day one here, I saw uh, I, Daniel Blake... Mm -hmm. You seen that one? <laughs> it's the new Ken, Ken Loach. Loach yeah, and it is uh, just a gut punch. <laughs> it is so devastating. It's a fascinating movie, great characters, really interesting. And then at the end, you're just like, I, I, I can't even. And then, <laughs> so and then the next day, what I see the next day, I saw uh, parts of Reservoir Dogs, part of it. Right. But no, I saw all of uh, something in the afternoon. Oh, it's called Quest. And this was a documentarian, or a guy that became a documentarian in the process, because he started off a photographer just doing an art project. He followed this one family uh, with cameras uh, in uh, North Philadelphia for eight years. And some stuff, uh, this family goes through some stuff, and it's real, again, like it was just crazy emotional. So like every time a movie ends here, because also I found Gilbert emotional for uh, a lot of reasons. Sure. And every time a movie ends here, I'm just like wiping tears off of my face. So uh, I was hoping one of you guys would recommend something that wouldn't make me want to kill myself. <laughs> Paris can wait, my yeah. friend. Okay. Follow I mean, I, if, if she decides not to fuck him, I will kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to wreck. That anything. story seems like it could go bad for me. I think. I think you have a promising double feature in Paris Can Wait and Employees Entrance Act. Yeah, that sounds. That yeah. sounds like a real fun day for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, this is the part where I tell Bert Kreischer to turn the show off because I'm about to say, "Let the games begin, Woo! Uh, gentlemen." We've got a lot of great name tags in the audience. Oh, I didn't see Matt Roosevelt. That's a cool, cool one. Uh, so uh, we need each of you to go select uh, who you'd like to play for by just taking the name tag from them. There's a lot of inglorious bastards out there, Sam. There is an insane amount of And there's a lot of, of, of people of signs bastards. that say that as well. And uh, while you guys pick, we'll go to a commercial break. We'll be right back. Oh, my God. Today's episode is brought to you by Casper Mattresses. The Casper is an obsessively engineered mattress at a shockingly fair price. Supportive memory foams create an award-winning sleep surface with just the right sink and just the right bounce. Try Casper for 100 nights risk-free in your own home. If you don't love it, they'll pick it up and refund you everything. Casper understands the importance of truly sleeping on a mattress before you commit, especially considering you're going to spend and a third of your life on it. Free shipping and returns to US and Canada with over 20,000 reviews and an average of 
4.8 stars. It's quickly becoming the internet's favorite mattress. I know producer Ryan sleeps on a Casper mattress and he told me that it's like sleeping on cotton candy. Get $50 towards any mattress purchased by visiting casper.com slash movies using offer code movies. Terms and conditions apply. All right, we're back. Tell us about your name tags, guys. Starting with uh, Leonard, you went with uh, Marx Brothers. I went with the Marx Brothers, tried and true, uh, in animal zackers, as opposed to animal crackers. And the faces have been uh, distorted, let's say, creatively. Yeah, so Sam is, uh, which one is he? Sam is Groucho. Yeah. Damn and, right. And, and Harpo is Leonard. I'm Harpo. Chico is me. Yep. And of course, Sean is Zeppo. It makes perfect sense. Is Zeppo the coolest person? Yep, never, he's the coolest one. He's Hell the yeah. most famous of all the Marx Brothers. <laughs> I'm gonna, People turn on Marx Brothers movie going, I can't wait to hear what Zeppo's got to say. I'm starting to feel kind of benign again. <laughs> I would think Sean's more of a gummo. <laughs> Thank you, Leonard. I don't, I, don't like, I don't like what's happening up here with my friends. <laughs> what are you wearing, Sean? Did you pick out something for the wedding on Saturday? <laughs> he, would, he would be stoked. His wife would fucking be furious if I wore this. Uh, this is, and I'm, I'm noticing, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I'm wearing the name tag. I'm thrilled about it. Brad Santa. And I'm sure, I don't know, I'll tweet a picture out because it, it's dope. It's the first name tag that I've ever been able to wear. So I'm excited about it. And it wasn't supposed to be the sweater, but Brad Santa was cool enough to make the name tag the sweater. So, I, yeah, I picked Wait. It was supposed Brad was, to be Brad was just wearing the sweater? Well, I mean, I think it went, and I, I went, I was like... You insisted on taking his clothing? I go, I was like, listen, dickhead, give me your sweatshirt. <laughs> I have a wedding to go to on Saturday. If we can make a trade, then yes, I'll pick your name tag. So, you know, here we go. I would be so happy if you wore that to the wedding. I got all G'd up over here and my, my jeans with the hole in the crotch. I can wear those. But I think we should give it back to Brad because the bars don't let people in shirtless around here. And, oh, no, uh, he's, no, I wouldn't dare do that. He's got oh, a shirt Oh, okay, on. he's got another shirt. Yeah, that'd be cr You thought that I was going to make Brad sit there with no shirt on? I just kept looking over at Brad, and I don't know if you'll find this offensive or not, but I was just wondering why Weird Al Yankovic was at the show. <laughs> He's a friend of mine. He could be up here. But good job, Brad. What do you got, Sam? Uh, so this was very difficult for me because a lot of you uh, <laughs> made a lot of Inglorious Bastards uh, posters. There was even a Drones poster over there. Shout out to you. That was awesome. But uh, Laura went really next level, and she took a production still of me from the film <laughs> as opposed to just photoshopping my face onto Brad Pitt's. That's so sick. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's Inglorious. Inglorious bastard. Yeah, we discussed that at the beginning of the show. That one caught my eye. Indeed. Uh, and I'm a, a slight point deduction for calling me Sam the man. I'm the ma'am. Please. Uh, but uh, AKA Lil Wolverine and uh, <laughs> I just, uh, that's, uh, that's the toughest I've ever looked in any photo I've ever taken. Holding you look tough in that photo? <laughs> hey, I'm don't holding listen a to gun, him. man! Hey, don't I mean, listen Yeah, but the him. face doesn't say tough at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was, guy thinks you're 12. I was 12 in this, not, definitely not 26. All right, well, great job, everybody, and uh, good luck to the people who were chosen. I have no idea uh, how we're doing on time, so I'm going to glance at it. Oh, well, that's not too bad. Uh, we got several games that I'd like you gentlemen to play, uh, starting with a little something that I call Characters Welcome. And this is a game that TNT. one or two people in the audience love. And I am going to name characters played by a particular actor or actress, and the first one to guess who that is is the winner of the game. Sounds good. Yeah, and you can guess as often as you'd like, and I'll even take a pre-guess uh, pre <laughs> if you want to do one right now. Jim Bruce Perry. Willis. No <laughs> and no. <laughs> Leonard, do you have a pre-guess? Roger Crawford. Nope. <laughs> I mean, wildly different. Yeah. We don't have to say our name, we just guess, right? Yeah, just say as, as often as you like. Just okay. say it out. Uh, 
who played these parts? Tim. <laughs> played a character named Tim. Bruce. <laughs> Is that uh, me, Doug? Sheldon. Yeah, that's me. Dirk. Spanky. Ha 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 ha, I'm just kidding, it's Sam Levine. Let's play this game for real. Those, there were no last names there. <laughs> that was uh, Tim Steinberg. Thank yeah. you. Bruce had no last name. All right, well, some of these are full names for the, for the real person. All right, here we go. This is the real game. That was, I was just having fun. Thank God. What did you play Dirk in? Uh, uh, Club Dread. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tight. Who played Private Roy Loomis? How about, and this is just for the people on stage, by the way. <laughs> how about Captain Hank Wilson? Or Charlie Bubber Reeves? Paul Bratter? A character called Dorfmunder. Vin Diesel? Nope. All right. <laughs> Is there an actor named What the Hell Are You Talking About? Gary Bill, Cooper. Bill McKay. James Stewart. Nope. <laughs> Johnny Hooker. Val Kilmer. No. Oh, my God. Not Val Kilmer. This actor also played... Jay Gatsby. Leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio. No. Uh, Robert Redford. That is correct. It's Robert Redford. <laughs> Next, I was going to say the Sundance Kid and then Bob Woodward. <laughs> no idea he was in so many war pictures. <laughs> yeah, those movies were, uh, all, all the ones I was saying before were from the uh, 60s and uh, 70s. And so that's why Sean was so confused. <laughs> but uh, Sam won that game, so that means he gets to go first in our next game called Whose Tagline Is It Anyway? And yes, more people are into that game. Uh, this is a game where I'm going to say a tagline from a motion picture, and uh, this is one at a time you get to guess on these. So we'll start with Sam, and then we'll go to uh, Sean and then Leonard. And if the person in front of you doesn't get it, then you get a shot at it. So only guess when asked to guess. Sam. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what movie has the tagline, The Ocean is Calling? The Ocean is Calling. Um, the Big Blue? No. All right. Not a bad guess. Thank you very much. <laughs> Not a correct guess. <laughs> But not a bad one. Sean, the ocean is calling. Blue Crush? Now, Somebody are you just saying blue because Sam said it? <laughs> Completely different movie. <laughs> Leonard, do you have any idea? The ocean is calling. The Deep? Oh, that's another good guess. Um, in all three of those cases, if the ocean was calling me, I would let it go to voicemail. <laughs> but... The correct answer is Moana. Uh, Moana. My favorite film. <laughs> yeah, Moana. It's playing in the free space uh, here this Sunday oh, night. Oh, I uh, the open space. It's uh, free to the public, and it's great watching movies out of doors. Sam? Yes, sir. Here's a new one for you. Okay. What movie has a tagline? Here's to the fools who dream. A little film called La La Land? That's right, and it's played last night in the open space. <laughs> <laughs> those were wildly dipped. That was... <laughs> one of those was easy. All right, Sean, you got to go first on this next one. I wanted the easy one. <laughs> <laughs> he was a cool customer. <laughs> Until the law made it hot for him. <laughs> I think up until now, I've had a failure to communicate, so I'm going to say Cool Hand Luke. Cool Hand Luke is correct. <laughs> Playing here at the Traverse City Film Festival this Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Got a theme. 
I'm hip let's see. This. Let's see what uh, Leonard does with this one. Bob's a special kind of friend. <laughs> the kind that drives you crazy. <laughs> As in, what about Bob? What about Bob? <laughs> we have a three-way tie. <laughs> I would never say that you look like Dr. Leo Marvin under any other circumstances, but I'm going to say it right now. Okay. All right. I, I can live with that. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean? What? He told him he looks like Dr. Leo Marvin. Yeah, the Richard, Richard Dreyfuss Marvin. character, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. I'm what, I'm bored a with it, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. Just say it to every person you see with white hair and a beard. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is a miracle worker. <laughs> Leonard what? Malton, I mean. I yeah, got nothing. I got rubbing his face, goddammit. Yeah, got nothing. All right. Leonard even told you that got nothing without even saying it into his microphone. It's true. He's got the microphone down he by his knees. He doesn't even need like the G. listeners to hear him burning you. He just <laughs> quietly burns you. <laughs> Fine, he's not a miracle worker. Whatever. You guys don't know our relationship. All right, so to settle the tie on this one, all of you, your buzzers are open, unlocked. All right. Everybody, just guess as soon as you think you know it. Reservoir dogs. <laughs> Did I allow for pre-guessing? You're out. Okay. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> I got to give Sean and Leonard a chance tonight, you guys. <laughs> Any chance to knock Sam out. Okay, between you two. You're serious. He's out. I yeah, he's out. Put my microphone down. <laughs> <laughs> say, say it. The story of a man who could only count to number one. Infinity baby. <laughs> Is that like if you wished... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. If you wish Baby one. Driver would never end? <laughs> Infinity Baby Driver? There's a movie here at the festival called Infinity Baby. That's not the correct answer. Uh, Leonard, do you have any idea? None. All right, Sam. Reservoir Dogs. I have no idea. <laughs> you really don't know? No, I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah, so the people in the audience know. Mr. Um, Roosevelt? Somebody in the audience just said Shake and Bake. Oh, there it is. Oh, Talladega, Talladega Nights. Nights. Oh, okay. You could have held that up and not said anything, and nobody would have got mad. You wouldn't have been cheating. You would have been. Hey, like, I, w I was waiting for that. Settle down. Talladega Nights, the ballad of Ricky Bobby. There you go. No. Are you guys competing with each other or just hanging out? What's going on? <laughs> well, I was out of the game. I, I didn't think me saying it. I thought it would I got it when I said Talladega Nights. I forgot about the full. No, time, I but. brought you back in, Sam. When it was oh. when the, these two fellas. Yeah. Were drawn blanks. Uh, Sean was almost going to go see that movie the other night. I was. It's true. Yeah. Because yeah, it played out the outdoor space as well. Yeah. So that was the theme of all of those. It uh, rained? I don't know why I didn't go see it. <laughs> <laughs> I did, we did something else. We already seen Talladega Nights. Oh, yeah, we, we were party. at the opening night party. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, got yeah. hammered. What do you do? <laughs> all right, you guys. I want you guys to just really dig in and compete. I'm here. I'm ready. No, no shit, you're here. Let's do it. <laughs> you guys are You're like, look at, look at, just look at everybody's posture. Sam is ready to go. No, no, I'm putting on... I'm playing. I'm putting on Leonard is just face. chilling and... Uh, no, I'm putting on uh, my game face right now. Sean's just getting drunk. I'm not. Sean looks Stop. like he just, just needs to get a new cab, leave the Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> I do look like that. I'm going to give you that. I do. That's exactly what I look like. <laughs> yep. Susan's not having it, man. I gotta go. I gotta go. She's still married. I, you know, take me home. Monday's gonna be a bummer. Like if I were leaving the Christmas party, you know? And I've been trying to fuck Susan for like a year. People are really, people are really being cheated by not being able to see this Christmas sweater. This is an outstanding They'll see it. I'll Christmas it. sweater. It is pretty dank. Yeah. I'm really feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why the house the lights just up. got brighter. Like <laughs> he wanted, someone he in the theater the thought uh, Leonard means the audience members are being cheated. No, 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 no. By not being Listen, able to the see listeners. it. Yeah, exactly. The listeners. Yeah, exactly. The listeners are... Yeah. They'll get an eyeful of it, though. We'll, get, we'll make sure we get a picture of it. All right. Yeah. Am I having a stroke? It just got really bright, then very dim in here. That's what we were talking All about. All of that is true. 
You might be having a stroke because you missed that part of the conversation we were just having. <laughs> okay. We just, we just learned to that spot up. the warning signs, people. <laughs> Wait, did I miss the last 30 seconds of what everybody with a am microphone I, said? Am I going deaf from a stroke? <laughs> I believe that I am. <laughs> Brad Santa's a doctor. Maybe he could help out. What kind of doctor? Didn't land. <laughs> a cool Who's one, Who's a bro. doctor? I was kidding. It didn't land. It was one of those jokes that wasn't good. I still would like you to answer the question, who's the doctor? Brad Santa. Oh, okay. <laughs> I feel like I missed something. Yeah. Um, all right, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going to play a game called Last Man Santa. I'm Yay. in. Okay. I'm in there like swimwear. Let's compete. All right. Yeah, this is the one where um, we're going to get a name from uh, an audience member of an actor or actress, hopefully someone that's not from too long ago, so Sean can participate, and hopefully someone who's not too... What would be, like, out of your wheelhouse, Leonard? Like, people that are in uh, horror movies? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Teen comedies, you probably don't have to sit through too many of those anymore. I choose not to. But I'm really good at those, so try to like push for yeah. those. What's your favorite teen comedy of all time, Leonard? Fast Times at Richmond High. Nice. Wow. I would have said Beach Blanket Bingo for you. <laughs> well, you would have been wrong. I guess so. Yeah. Good thing that wasn't one of the games. <laughs> now, this isn't going to be a popular opinion, but it's going to be not another teen movie. And it's absolutely hilarious. It's a hilarious movie. Even for those shitty parody movies, it's fantastic. Did I ask you what yours was? No, but Sam said his, Leonard said his, and I was going to say mine regardless if you asked or not. Because I had a feeling you weren't going to ask, so I just said it. <laughs> and I knew you were yeah, going to Yeah, I'm say not that. interested in what someone who is just a teenager thinks of teenage movies. <laughs> this was a conversation for us. <laughs> But you do like that movie, not another teenage movie? Yeah. It was I'm talking to you, Sean. Oh, yes. When I speak to you, you don't answer. And when I don't ask you, you do answer. Yes, I love that movie. <laughs> Does that, is that a magical sweater that makes you drunk? I'm not drunk. It makes you Christmas drunk when you put it on. <laughs> Look at how sober Brad Santa looks right now. I feel like I'm being painted in a bad light. I'm not drunk. I will be later. All right. I guarantee that, but I'm not right. right now. Might as well be now. I'm at work. Might as well. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were at the work party. <laughs> God damn it, Susan. I guess I'll drink the whole bottle then. All right, here we go. Where is D underscore Chungus? What? Front row. Off in the case. Super fan. I believe you contacted me two or three days ago. Uh, via Twitter. Your other name besides D underscore Chungus, I mean, that's pretty catchy, but <laughs> you're also listed as Meow Spaceman. <laughs> so that's what really catches my eye. I'm like, oh, Meow Spaceman, this guy's going to be interesting. What's his uh, Twitter handle? D Chungus? Not a real name in there. That's fun. <laughs> yeah, he's keeping it anonymous. <laughs> but now we're looking right at him. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that sitting next to you? You don't know that person? You have the same clothes on. It's 100% true. They I really thought they do. were they like brothers the that showed up. Let's wear our blue t-shirts and our brown khaki shorts. Let's do this. Oh, they're green? I apologize. I take it all back. <laughs> you guys are wearing the same shit. That's crazy. All right, so uh, <laughs> what's your actual name? Peter. Peter. Okay, Peter. Uh, you were off the grid. Oh, we right. talked to him earlier because his, his name tag was Peter. What was it? Peter Town. <laughs> he changed the to Peter. I know it was Chinatown, but it'd be even funnier if somebody took the town and covered up the with their own name. You know, you see how it's catchy, right? Everyone's like, Peter, no, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> if your name was like, uh, then it would work, a town. All right, so Peter, <laughs> town. <laughs> um, <laughs> you told me you have a suggestion for this game, and we're going to hear that suggestion now. Just a regular one. Okay. 
<laughs> mashup? Sometimes we do a mashup. What? Now, Peter. Uh, fuck. <laughs> I wish there was a place I could send you to called Peter Town, where you, where you could learn that Marlon Wayans, especially for an extremely white panel, <laughs> might be kind of a toughie. So do you want to uh, toss out another idea? John now, John Travolta is perfect. <laughs> I can rip off some Marlon Wayans movies. Let's, let's not get it twisted. I can... No, no, no. Don't, don't, don't mess with this. Don't mess with this. <laughs> all right, so... Uh, I'm making, so don't mess with this. <laughs> so Sam has been uh, winning all night, so uh, he's going to go second. I'm going to go first, and then we'll go to Sean and Leonard and then back to me, because I like to play along. That's why we got the suggestion from Peter. Thank you very much. John Travolta starred in a movie called Perfect. <laughs> Why would you take a deep cut like that right out of the gate? Well, because I had just said out loud, John Travolta, that name is perfect. So I wanted to say it before any of you thought of it, which you clearly all did not. <laughs> wow. And hold all the rest of your questions, Sean, until after the game. Sam. <laughs> Look who's talking. <laughs> <laughs> Sean. Grease. Grease, very nothing, good. Nothing funny about it. Yeah. It. The Devil's Reign. Oh, Leonard with the deepest cut of them all. <laughs> all right. We're going that far back, are we? It's not far. You can't go further back. Well, I'm going to go in the other direction and say Carrie. Oh. Yeah. He's in Carrie. Don't look at me like that. No, he is. He's 100% in Carrie. I didn't, it wasn't disbelief. It was, I just, oh. What was that look? I didn't know that, man. I was, ex I was excited. Excited, yeah. Okay. Shit. Check it out sometime. I do things right sometimes. Uh, <laughs> no, your face looked like you were stunned. I yeah. Was just, Not delighted. I was you know what I want to do when you look at me like that? I want to take your face <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I want to do to you? I want to take your Battlefield Earth off. <laughs> Good one. I want to rip it right off. <laughs> Leonard. <laughs> he said white, Battlefield Earth. White man's burden. Oh, that is good. Yeah, yeah. I always party too hard when I come to uh, Traverse City. And, uh, you know, by the weekend, I'm really messed up. Like, I'm pretty sure I'll have Saturday night fever. <laughs> hey, what? look who's talking too. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Pulp Fiction. Know what I mean? <laughs> Crazy. I do. Do you know what you mean? Right over there, Pulp Fiction. He's you know. <laughs> do we all have to play this? Because, because, no, you don't have to form it as no, no, a sentence. No, 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 because, because we, we all mentioned that Sean got a fresh haircut today, mm -hmm. and I'm sure they used some hairspray. Uh, Yay! <laughs> they did. A lot of hairspray in this mug. <laughs> What's the name of the place where you got your hair did? That was me asking you a question. I know, I, I'm... I, I know that. I was trying to think. You were just name. still drinking while I was. <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> I just can't remember the name of uh, Lori Spot for some reason right now. Do you remember it? You could ask her. Foxy. Say it. Foxy. Foxy's. No. Foxy. Foxy. How do you think it's spelled, Sean? F A U X I E. <laughs> no. I didn't really think that. So what do you think it is spelled like? F-O-X-Y? Correct. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. There it is. Looking good, dude. I appreciate it. You Whose too. turn is it? It's yours. yours. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Michael's turn. <laughs> Fuck, man. But there's no one up here named Michael. No, but Jesus, look who's talking now. <laughs> Because who knows what those are fucking called? 
Why is it the second one called Look Who's Talking To? Still talking, and somebody else is talking. It's too Why don't they have a colon and everything? It's T-O-O. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good job. All right. It was fun to have you do that little run. It really was. Yeah. I'm not going to think of one in the next 10 seconds. How about if I gave you 12 seconds? (laughs) Had to have been a hit. Nothing? Eight seconds? Was there a rodeo movie named Eight Seconds that he was in? There sure was, but I don't think John Travolta was in that, unless he also played Luke on Beverly Hills 90210. And I'm out. <laughs> Sorry, Brad. Does he have to, when does he have to give you this shirt back? Whenever. Whenever. <laughs> Talk to me in 10 years, Playboy. I'm going to wear this. <laughs> I'm going to wear this for a while. I like it. It fits. It feels silky. Hey, shit, we forgot about Lifelines. Oh, shit. Yeah, we can go to Brad Santa to see if he's got one. Phenomenon. Phenomenon. Playboy. We're still in it. Phenomenon. You're still in it. Excellent. Good job. So, yeah, Leonard, if you uh, need your lifeline, it'll be the person whose name tag you chose. Okay. (laughs) But I think you still got more Travoltas in you. I hope so. Urban Cowboy? Yeah. Of course. Prequel to eight seconds, obviously. (laughs) Did him bringing up rodeo help you to think of that? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm always struggling to uh, find people to be guests on my show. In Traverse City, there's always lots of great people to choose from, but also I have to uh, bring people in, and I talk to the festival about who would you like to see on the, the show, and we all agreed that we needed, for this one tonight, we needed to get Shorty. And I know, I think I know what Sam's going to say to that, maybe. Dude. Don't. Dude. Dude. Be cool. Be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't you just let me be in the game a little longer? <laughs> Fucking crap. I mean, I don't want to hold it up. I, it's not going to happen. All right. Leonard? I hope I'm getting this title right. Engine Company 49? Oh, damn it. I'm sorry. But you want to use your lifeline for something else yes, or for correction yes. on that one? Do we want to... Can you, will you tell me the correct title? Oh, well, I will when it's my turn. <laughs> 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 Where is uh, your lifeline at? Oh, here in the front row. What's, uh, you got one for him? Saturday Night Fever. Well, I said oh, Saturday Night Fever because I'm going to come down with it. When I, <laughs> he said Grease because he has some in his hair. He went to Foxy today. What? There blow you go. Out. That one blow has not out. been blow said because it's on my list. Blowout. Okay. Yeah. You going with blowout? I'm going with blowout. All right, Leonard goes with blowout. That's correct. Um, all right, for my next one, I would like to say... Ladder 49. There it is. Yeah. Sure, the hunky fireman. I was fireman trying movie. to <laughs> fucking unlock that one in my brain, but I just... Uh, I just had to get rid of it in case you'd thought of it. I didn't... No, I didn't, I didn't have the password. I thought it was swordfish, but... <laughs> I'm glad I'm out. I can't do this. Yeah. I, can't, I can't do this magic. This is crazy. <laughs> it's like I'm up here with three wizards. I love it. <laughs> Leonard, do you have another one? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, hmm. running, I'm running dry. Yeah. Uh, because the last few films of his I've seen have not been memorable. <laughs> Get your shit together, John. No, I, li- I like John Travolta. He-, he did a film where he played an art forger. Uh, did you see that one? I don't think it opened in theaters. I think it went direct to... Yeah, I don't know if I saw it, but if, I, you know, if I'm aware of him being in something, you're right, like, his movies aren't always great, but I, I like him so much as an actor. If he's in it, that m- makes me want to check it out. Yeah, no, I like him. But, uh, <laughs> but this game is hard to, uh, you know, it's... You run out of titles at a certain point, and I think like that's where we are. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've just run. But great job. Yeah. 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 Clap. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead. That's, Feel free. That's pity applause. Right? That's pity applause. That's so sad. <laughs> I didn't even get that, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I just got shut the fuck upstairs, is what I got. <laughs> That sounds like somebody wants you to leave the room and be quiet. Shut the fuck upstairs. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> well, I mean, uh, I'd say another title, but I, I've got a bolt. Hey! Oh. hey. <laughs> If You're excited just, for that one. People, the kids knew that one probably. If it's just down to you and me, Doug, there might be a fight. This could be a whole mad town. Mad city. Mad city. Oh. Self-corrected. Oh, oh. man. Sorry, I, I'm locked in. Mad city. <laughs> what do you want from me, guys? I, deci- I decide movies. when an answer is locked in. Right. <laughs> uh, in a Valley of Violence is a uh, movie that he's in that I enjoy a great deal that's more recent. Uh, I saw it last, uh, like a year ago, at uh, South by Southwest. So that's my answer. In that's the Valley of Violence. Was that whole thing the title of the movie? Huh? <laughs> that's not a bluff. <laughs> I'm, not. I'm not Graham Elwood. <laughs> that movie doesn't star Leif Garrett. <laughs> I, uh, I'm worried about... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, fuck it. The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. <laughs> Made for television. I win. Um, oh, wait, where's, can I go to Do you want to go to your lifeline? Sure. Wild hogs. Wild hogs. Wild hogs. Holy shit. How the fuck? Way to go, Laura. How could we miss Good wild God. hogs? I do not know. I thought sitting up here that we were the experts. Oh! You guys, nobody told me I could check my tattoos for movies because I would have seen right here my wild hogs tattoo, and that would have reminded me. <laughs> Where is it? On your leg right next to your wild hog? <laughs> Uh, my wild hog. Uh, is, it on, is it on the side where the dingle dangles? Are you trying to think of another one, Sam? Yeah. Oh, shit. God damn it. There was that one he did that one time. No, there was this. And there was that other one. No, there's a movie. It has the word. Uh, do not yell it out, folks. I'm going to work this one not, through. Not, folks. Uh, it's got the word kill in the title, and it's him and De Niro, and it is unfucking watchably bad. And I've seen it twice and still can't remember the name of this movie. Uh, and Milo Ventimiglia is in it. He plays uh, uh, De Niro's son. And it's called, like, it's not Kill Shot. And it's not Righteous Kill. I'd walk away from that one and pick one of the dozens of other movies he was in. <laughs> you... don't, don't let him in your head, dude. Oh, man. I'm not in his head. I'm just over here. <laughs> no, there are dozens, and I was having trouble coming up with I don't know them. if it's dozens, but he's made a lot of Oh, movies. he's made a lot of movies, and a lot of them have gone straight to, to DVD. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, hmm. Come on, you gotta stay alive. He was oh. not in Staying Alive. And also, be quiet. I get Wait, it. what? He was the star of it. Well, Staying Awake is what Donna Pescal called it. Thank you, Leonard. That one was just for you. <laughs> But just because you put it in a sentence and made it all clever doesn't mean I appreciate you yelling out answers while we're still playing. <laughs> <laughs> so staying alive's off the table. And that's fine. I, it wasn't on my list. Uh, <laughs> how many more you got? I don't have too many anymore. Oh. I mean, I've got two of a kind with Olivia Newton-John. <laughs> uh, moment to moment with uh, Lily Tomlin. No, nope, we'll never forget. That's Thank awful, you. right? I will never forget seeing that movie, because... Uh, oh, my God, PTSD. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, Let her no. put the gun down. No. <laughs> my wife and I saw it at a press conference. My Crowded theater in New York. <laughs> and the audience, if you could have turned a camera on the audience, they would have looked like the people watching the Springtime for Hitler number in The Producers. Right, yeah. Just slack-jawed. In, with disbelief that this was happening. Yeah, it was bizarre. Oh, man. Yeah, that wasn't a good one. That, you're a uh, master of understatement. You know what you should have done after seeing that? If you were really upset by it, you should have taken a civil action. Oh, uh-huh. that's a good one. Oh, I got one. A well, civil action. Right, that's a good <laughs> one. I got one. And, um, yeah, he's done a lot of them. Yeah. He really has. Yeah, but <laughs> Sam, you lasted the longest, so you're our winner tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Sam did it, everybody. Domestic disturbance, right? Domestic disturbance? Domestic oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, With taking the, a Pelham 1, 2, 3? Him and Vince Vaughn. God. Vince Vaughn and Terry Polo mm-hmm. and Steve Buscemi, who got knifed in the face during the shooting of that movie at a bar fight. Steve Buscemi did. True story. What a fucking gangster. That is yeah, really. That's some crazy shit there. Yeah, it that really is. is. All right, uh, so let's go to the audience for more uh, titles. Broken Arrow. 
A Punisher. Punisher. Michael. We said Michael. Michael. Primary colors. Primary colors. Oh, yeah. Can't believe we missed that one. Yeah. It's, wait a second. The killing, the killing season. season. Thank you. I this knew gentleman it knew it. Wait, is he in Basic and the General's Daughter? Basic. Definitely in Basic. From Paris with Love. Oh. The Luc Besson thing. I said take a film one, two, three just now, but. Um, in red line, we, we didn't said say face, face off, off and general's said. daughter, so we're getting repetitive. But that's what happens, like, uh, if, you know, if you can't write them all down, it's hard to remember which ones are said. Savages? Somebody over there just said Ooh. Punisher in the night. Savages. Savages. Shout. I was, th I was thinking that was called sing, so that's why I didn't say it. But shout. Yeah. You know. Old dogs. Old dogs. Is he in that one, too? I don't know. Yeah, yeah that's Robin Williams. Oh. Um, if this uh, Savages is an is interesting movie, but if you screw that up with The Savages, those are two very, very different <laughs> movies. And for those of you listening to this near a computer, I highly recommend you look them up for an after laugh. The Savages is a cartoon, yeah? No, The Savages is uh, Philip Laura Seymour Lee and Philip Seymour Hoffman, Hoffman and yeah. Philip Bosco. Yeah. It's two like middle-aged people caring for their dying father, and it's a it's a heartbreaking Wildly movie to watch. Wildly different from the Oliver Stone. And right? then Savages, movies. the Oliver Stone movie, <laughs> is a fun romp about drug dealers. <laughs> Taylor Kitsch is like fourth shot, and he just couldn't make it work. I I don't know. I'm a Taylor. Yeah, Kitch let's fan. worry about Taylor Kitsch on a, at another time. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about plugs. Leonard Maltin's doing his podcast here at this festival this Sunday true. morning. That is true, and we have another episode uh, breaking on Friday tomorrow. Actually, oh, okay, on good. Maltin movies with our guest uh, Nikolai Custer Valdal of uh, Game of Thrones fame. Do I look shocked or excited? Uh, shocked. <laughs> shocked. We, we landed a guest like that, yes. And he's charming. Just a delightful guest. That's cool. Are you a he's Game a, of Thrones watcher? A, I'm really not, but, uh, but I, I like him. And he's one of these 25-year overnight success stories. Yeah. He's been working a long, long time. And yeah, I see him in, in stuff sometimes. I'm like, oh, that guy from Game of Thrones was in stuff before Game of Thrones. Who yep. is he in Game of Thrones, if I can ask? Oh, he's... Jake what? Lannister. He's here? <laughs> sorry, no. sorry, sorry. No. Continue. He's, Continue. he's virtually on our podcast. I get it. I yeah, get you it. could listen to it the tomorrow, Sean. Tomorrow. From anywhere. Called Malton on Movies. Yeah. Yeah, and on the Nerdist Network. All right. Leonard Malton, everybody. You! <laughs> Uh, Sean Jordan and Sam and I will all be doing a comedy panel tomorrow night uh, in this same facility at, uh, with some other uh, guests of the festival involved in comedic films. And that's at 6 o'clock, and I think that's uh, free to everybody. I don't think you need a ticket for that. And uh, what else you got going on, Sean? Uh, I do a podcast on a very regular basis. My, my roommate and uh, best friend, Ian Carmel, has a podcast called All Fantasy Everything, where we draft pop culture. Just uh, like the Taco Bell menu, the mall. So we just do like a fantasy draft of things like that. It's a very fun podcast. So uh, give that a listen if you, if you get a chance. That's it. Thanks. Sean Jordan. And, of course, our friend Sam. Uh, you can hear me and see me on Kevin Pollock's chat show. Uh, which is on iTunes and YouTube, and we've got new episodes coming almost every week now. They, uh, they drop on Tuesdays. Uh, but very big and exciting coming up on August 4th, Wet Hot American Summer, 10 years later on Netflix. Yes. All episodes streaming Friday, August 4th. Check that out. Is there any talk of like some sort of, uh, of Freaks and Geeks X number of years later? Not that... Way to get people's hopes up. No, not that I've heard of. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how you get it going. You start going around telling people, hey, we might get this. We that might is. Be a thing. And when people ask me about that all the time, like, is there going to be a Freaks and Geeks reunion? And I always say, believe me, if they were asking the actors, I would be the first one to sign on. <laughs> You'd be, I'd be the one to give you the definitive answer whether it was happening or not. And uh, it is uh, not, to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. All right. So sorry, guys. 
But mm. for the record, we've done like big Paley Festival fa- uh, panels and stuff where everyone is on the stage. We talk about it. It's the whole crew back together again. And that's all video that you can find online, I think, on Amazon. So if you really want to see how well we've all aged in one sitting, <laughs> feel free to look that one up. That's just Right on. Ago. Sam Levine, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I've got a stand-up show coming up at the Comedy Works in Denver on Monday, September 4th at 4.20. Denver! And uh, tomorrow night, tomorrow night at midnight, uh, we are going to do an interruption, movie interruption of Starship Troopers, uh, anniversary screening. Great movie, but we're going to add some jokes to it. And uh, that's tomorrow night. If you're, uh, if you're listening and you're in the Traverse City area, come by and... You guys, of course, I think some of you might already uh, have your tickets. And thank you for coming out tonight. Yeah. Yeah. One more time for all of my guests, Leonard Malton, Sean Jordan, and Sam, the ma'am, Levine, a.k.a. Lil Logan. Thank you, Leonard. And... As a consolation prize to the two name tags that were chosen, whose uh, players did not win tonight, I have to say whatever they tell me to say is a shithead, and then the show is over. And here's here's how it's gonna go. <laughs> Seasonal allergies are a shithead, and they made it so that Jesse Pasternak was saying it. I don't know if Jesse has seasonal allergies or not. <laughs> and the potholes during the winter in Michigan are a shithead. Now it's time for Doug to watch another cocky. Eyes of both his viewing prowess makes him cocky. There's no room in his heart for you, cause God.